Welcome back, everybody, to episode six of JAR. Uh, for those of you who may be new, JAR stands for Joe. And Amy. Review. Uh, and we are here to talk once again about the Shadows Over Innistrad story. We are here for episode six of the Shadows Over Innistrad story as well, the Drownyard Temple. Uh, just, you can see us holding our uh, fat packs here. I was going to call them pre-release kits. We did that already. Um, but feel free to check out on the channel. We've opened pre-release kits. We're going to be opening these fat packs. We're actually going to be doing the first ever official fiancé fat pack battle. Uh, so you guys will get to see Amy open hers, me open mine, and we'll get to see whose is better. Uh, and you guys can let us know whose you think is better if it's close. If it's not close, we'll probably just be able to figure it out. But yeah, so we're going to be I'm doing gonna that. But, but I'm going to win. Uh, and so uh, let's be real. Uh, and so, um, you'll be able to see that. You can probably check annotations above or go to the channel yourself and check it out if you don't see the annotations. So, uh, for now, we're going to put these away because that's not what we're doing in this video. Those are other videos. Uh, and we're going to talk about the Drown Yard Temple. Uh, so this was another story two weeks in a row of Jace, of Jace on Innistrad, of Jace going crazy, basically, kind of yeah. going, get, going slowly mad, um... Whereas in the last one, he the story ended with him leaving Markov Manor with Tamio's journal, and he seemed to be getting his wits about him more so than he was within Markov Manor. And we kind of didn't see that in this one. We kind of saw him kind of... I, would, I wouldn't even say slowly descending into madness. No. I would say like... Instantly. Precipitously <laughs> descending into madness. Uh, and so he was going down and down and down and... Um, and at the end, it was just like, yeah, no, I've drawn all these conclusions from all these clues, and so, yeah, this is the direction that it's going in, and yet, that's, in my opinion, not the direction that it, it's going in. I think he just got it wrong because he's working off of the wrong clues, he's working off of the wrong information, because he's crazy. And so, yeah, I, like, I was kind of confounded by that, you know, just the fact that that's what he, kind of the conclusion that he drew, because, again... As I've mentioned many times in these videos, if you've seen the other episodes, I think that Jace is being shown to be very vulnerable, very weak, um, and very kind of out of his element here. Uh, and you brought up to me earlier that that's because a lot of stuff here is dead. And so he can't read the minds of things that are dead. And the only time today where we saw him, or today, in this story, where we saw him try to read somebody's mind... Uh, as soon as he did, he got trapped in there. And that was kind of really when he started going crazy. Like, there were inklings in the beginning of this story, but as soon as he read that fisherwoman's mind was really when he started going downhill fast and kind of stayed there. Um, I, I, I thought, and you and I were kind of talking about this, but I thought that the story was super confusing. There definitely were parts that were confusing where I literally had to say, you know what, let's read that again. Um, because you really just needed to take that extra second to make sure that you understood exactly what was being said. Yeah. Um, and, but I found that to be kind of more the, f you know, based on the fact that they were just trying to be descriptive using, like, metaphors. And so, and I took it more literally the first time around. And then I had to read it a second time to figure out, okay, no, that's just a metaphor and this is what they're talking about. Well, kind of. I think it's more than that also, though, because I have to say, I feel like with a lot of it, with um, the, the descriptions from Tamio's journal uh, and with the stuff that Jace was kind of describing when he was trapped in that woman's mind and then at the end when he was actually at the drown yard, um, all of that, I feel like for me, could use a second read. I could definitely, I could definitely go back in and read it a second time, and I'm sure I would get either a different perspective or kind of get my mind expanded on right. certain things. So um, I, I just feel that way. I think about the about the drown yard part because I feel like Tamio's journal part was pretty. I thought it was cool. What I brought up, and I, I slightly brought this up to you, but in general, I loved the fact that. There was such a shift between Jace, who you see as this mind mage, he's super intelligent because, you know, he's able to trick people with illusions and kind of is, is able to read people's minds and so he has all this information. And yet, they can go from 
you kind of hearing Jace's voice and Jace's thoughts to going into Tamio's thoughts inside of her own journal and still being able to look at those journal entries and be and and know for a fact that it's a different voice especially because of there there's an air of intelligence like extreme intelligence in terms of the words that she was choosing to use mm -hmm. and I, I think it was it was great the the just the contrast there between the two characters and the two voices because going into it you would think like no jace is one of the smarter people you know he's a he's a mind mage he's a telepath like his brain is his weapon yeah and yet you read tamio and you're like wow tamio first of all i got the the feeling and the opinion that she was very proper mm -hmm. she's very intelligent mm -hmm. she's very kind of up here mentally well, um, she's, I mean, we basically figured out she's a scientist. Yes. You know? Mm hmm Yeah, and, and, you know, called back to Kamigawa, which I appreciate, because I had to explain that slightly to Amy of the fact that Tamio is one of the moon folk from Kamigawa, um, and yet shortly after I explained that to you in the story, they mentioned yeah. that the Soratami were... Um, Moon folk from Kamigawa, so they they did it for me just a little bit after I you know a little bit after the first time they mentioned it, so that I had to to explain what was going on. Uh, but I thought that it was very interesting. I think that I kind of knew in terms of the three um, illusions of himself that Jace made. I knew going in that the violet-eyed one was based on Liliana mm -hmm. just because of looking at the cards and knowing the imagery and the art in that anything that's violet is Liliana. Like, if it's a violet, if it's a zombie with violet eyes, Liliana did it. If it's Liliana, she has violet eyes and purple, pa like, violet powers in her, in her hands, mm -hmm. and that's the power color that she glows with. Um, and so when, when Jay said, oh, one of my illusions is, has violet eyes, it was like, yeah, okay, so that's the Liliana one. Um, and especially with the kind of the snarky responses from it, especially after right. having seen his interactions with Liliana mm -hmm. already previously, that really seemed to be what we were looking because at. Because they're exes. Because they're exes, as Amy likes to frequently point out. Uh, they, they act like they're exes. Yeah. That's, just how they, that's just how they act with one another. Um, but I liked that I didn't get, and I probably should have, but I didn't get that um, the pale illusionary Jace was going to turn into Tamio slash a nondescript moon folk in general. Um, do you do you want to talk at all about uh, the the journal and, and Jace's kind of companion on his trip? I, I, well, one of the things that I pointed out was, well, I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily pointed that out. Well, I guess initially I did because, you know, he, we basically read some dialogue and I was like, wait a minute, like he's talking to a journal. Like how much sure of a conversation was. does he really need to have with this journal? And then I thought, well, of course, you know, he's so used to hearing people's thoughts all the time, yep. reading people's minds, and he doesn't have that here. I mean, as soon as he left the mansion, you know, the Markov Manor, uh, we get the impression that all he's heard in his head after that point is more or less silence. And f for somebody like that, that silence is probably pretty... Maddening? Maddening, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, and it was... It was like, at first, it was the kind of thing where it was like, dude, you're talking to a book. You know, and it was like, as soon as he said it, as soon as he started doing it, it was like, really? And then, once he started doing it more, and I then... I was like, oh, that's cute. He, yeah. Like, he's so lonely. Yeah. He's talking to the journal. And then it just got... Well, because then, then he started... cute. Then, <laughs> well, because then he started yelling at it. Yeah. And, like, arguing with it. And... Usually, and expecting it to answer him when he had questions and... Yeah, and at one point he even said, like, of course it's not going to answer, it's a book. And it was like, 
Okay, but you've like, still why been... why didn't you say that, like, 20 minutes yeah. ago? Yeah, because you've, still, you've still been you talking to it this whole it. time. Like, yeah. So it was very, very odd, and that, like I said, that was really the inkling that I was talking about in the beginning, which I guess is a little bit more of an inkling, but that, that he was going crazy even outside of the influence of Markov Manor, um, and yet, and, and then kind of spiraled more so after kind of entering the fisherwoman's brain. Um, well, but it wasn't about entering the fisherwoman's brain. It was about the fact that Innistrad is going crazy. So the longer you spend on Innistrad, the crazier you're going to be. Yeah. And the closer you get to the, um, you know, the drowning, whatever. The drown yard. The yeah. drown yard. Yeah. You know, uh, the worse it's going to be for you mentally. And we got to hear a lot about the cryptoliths today, which I thought was great. Uh, super important. And in the art of the set... Like, even if you don't read these stories and you don't understand how important the cryptoliths are because of the stories, the cryptoliths are everywhere in the art. They're just yeah. all over the place. Um, not just on cards like Cryptolith Rite or Epiphany at the Drown Yard where it shows you tons of them. There are just, I think on Ulvenwald Hydra, one of the mythics, there's just random cryptoliths everywhere. It has nothing to do with the Hydra. It has nothing to do with it at all, but it just shows that by the way, these are all over Instrad, don't forget. You know, and it, it commented on the fact that we're getting more answers, which I appreciate, but very flavorfully, which I appreciate as well. Uh, the story mentioned it, and it's not incorrect in any way. The more answers they give us, the more questions it raises. Okay. And that's exactly what the journal said, that's exactly what Jace was saying, and it's totally true. Because they were answering questions, and they were saying, okay, well, the Drown Yard is a circle, and all of the cryptoliths point to the Drown Yard, and then the Drown Yard itself has a bunch of cryptoliths in a circle pointing inward, which create this object. And I was saying in the story, because Amy wasn't necessarily looking at the story the whole time as I was reading it, um, every time they used the word object to refer to what was going on at the Drown Yard, it was a capital O, even if it was in the middle of the sentence. It was an object capitalized. So, right. and, and so it was a, you know, it was a, yeah, I don't know what to say. It but was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was an attempt at letting you realize the importance of it. Right. You know, it, it, and that it, we don't know the name, but it has a name. Correct. You know, and it was weird because I'm assuming that it was a, uh, an illusion of some kind, but Jace twice in this story reached out for a cryptolith and got zapped by it. And even the sec after the, s the first time he did it, you know, he this the fact that he did it a second time, one of his illusions even says to him, I don't understand why you let that happen to you twice. You know, why did you reach out for that a second time? And yet, when he did reach out for it the second time, he was at the drown yard and was able to see the unseen, so to speak, where he was kind of able to see what was going on above the drown yard in that there was the object and he was able to see the object um and then was describing it again this is why i say it might have deserved a second read from me but it seemed to be describing the object as just a grouping of angels above but at the same time maybe they were just gathered around the object because the object is seemingly a celestial either a celestial being or a celestial body that is changing the flow of the tides and the pull of the tides. I got the impression that the angels were sort of in that formation, but underneath the object. Right. The object was, you know, further away, and that was their attempt to be closer to it, but they were just, you know, somewhere between the surface of the land and it. I also have to say, I think they did an awesome job, and Amy and I were freaking out when it was happening, where um, Jace was at the drown yard, and he's surrounded by zombies, and he's got these other three illusionary selves of his with him, and he f it says, you know, Jace feels something fall on his head, and Amy's like, ew, because she just assumed it was like one of the zombies that was getting closer or whatever. Yeah, I thought it was like sinew falling off of a zombie. Like, yeah, like the, the skin or whatever, as it like deteriorated, and I was like, no. That's because I had I was able to like slightly look ahead and see the word feathers, or that it was a feather, and I was like, no, it's not. That's not the zombies at all. And 
and you said you were like he's dead like he's yeah. gonna he's I was gonna like, die oh, now. that's worse <laughs> he's gonna die and, and obviously like he's not right because he's jace i would be very surprised i mean i guess they've shown that they're willing to kill off planeswalkers because elspeth is dead you know elspeth is i think the most recent planeswalker death that we've had in the stories made me mad. from Theros, <laughs> um, and that you know a Johnny kind of took up her mantle, kind of a thing. So they're definitely willing to kill him off, but at the same time, he's Jace. Yeah, you I know, don't think... if this was Gideon in the same place, I'd be more willing to believe that they would kill off Gideon. If it was a Johnny in this place, I'd be more willing to believe that they'd kill off a Johnny. Yeah, you know, Soren, God forbid. None of these are what I want. I'm just Sorry. saying, like. I would, I could see it more so than Jace. We talk about, I mention almost every time I talk about Jace, that Jace is the Mickey Mouse of Magic the Gathering. And so I doubt they would kill off their cash cow, you know? Um, there's a Jason standard right now, or, you know, from Origins, what was up to a hundred dollars. The Jace that's, um, you know, Jace uh, is, the Mind Sculptor is one of the best planeswalkers of all time and definitely one of the most expensive planeswalkers of all time so you know that i doubt that in the story they would kill him off um but anyway back to the storyline itself they did mention eldritch moon for the first time uh as we all know that is the next set in this block or the second and final set in this block is eldritch moon so they brought it up in this one as kind of, it could be an Eldritch Moon. I think, if I remember correctly, it was Tamio in her journal saying, you know, it's some kind of a celestial body or an Eldritch Moon. And I don't know whether the fact that the second set is called Eldritch Moon is just saying that that is what it is. That the cryptoliths are creating an Eldritch Moon that is yeah. changing the gravitational and magnetic pull on the planet and the mana drain on the planet. But it, it did give us those answers that I was desperately seeking. You know, what, what's what been going on? Why? The only, the, the, not the only, the main question that I have now... Well, we have, I feel like we have more the why, but we don't have the what. We also don't have the who. Right. The who or the what in, in who or what brought these cryptoliths up. Right. Who or what activated these cryptoliths, pointed them in this direction, because... Tamio said in her journal that they've noticed more formations of cryptoliths forming steadily over time. And it also talked about the fact that Tamio was around while Avacyn was going crazy, while the angels were going crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's because the cryptoliths twisted the mana of the plane. Yeah. And the angels, which are beings of pure mana, are also being twisted because of it. And they talked about that. And so, very... I also like that they showed in the in the art, and, you know, uh, it's on that card, that the, um, basically that there was, like, lightning or static electricity shooting out from them. Yep. Um, to kind of show the power that Jace felt yeah. when he touched it. Um, Twice. And, yeah. <laughs> For whatever reason. Um, <laughs> but basically to show us the intensity of the mana that these things are are stealing in essence and concentrating right concentrating to this object right. that we don't know what it is but we can guess that it's the eldritch moon since it was mentioned so my main question is at this point i don't know if you have different ones but my it's main the get rug you just love the get rug i do <laughs> uh but my main question now is who brought the cryptolis up there's that one card that everybody keeps talking about. It's one of the lands. I'm not going to remember the name of it, but it's got Nahiri on it, kind of with her arms in the air, and there's cryptoliths all around her. And so people are, are, are speculating that Nahiri is the one who brought up these cryptoliths. And if these cryptoliths are made of stone, which it looks like they are, and Nahiri is a lithomancer who is able to control stone, that would make perfect sense. Is she able to control mana through stone? I don't know. I mean, that, in my mind, makes sense, but... 
that doesn't mean anything. We'll have to see. <laughs> well, and, and the interesting the interesting thing is obviously once again we know that Nahiri is in this block or it is in this set, let alone this block. We know she's in this set, her card exists, and we've opened her, I guess, spoilers, you'll see that if you check out the opening videos, but um, we, we've opened her already, we've seen her, and yet she's not in the story yet. In fact, yeah. next week is episode seven, or, you know, with, with the story and for us, and the teaser for it discusses Soren, so we're finally gonna see Soren, and it discusses Olivia. And we know Olivia is back in this set as well. She's now mobilized for war, um, which means that presumably Soren gets through to her. We'll see in the story. Yeah, but we'll have to see how that comes about. Right. But neither of those people are Nahiri. So we haven't heard from Nahiri yet. We haven't heard about Nahiri yet at all. We know from Declaration in Stone and the flavor texts and things like that that it was Nahiri who put all of those vampires in the wall in Markov Manor. And seemingly it was to get back at Soren for something, presumably what happened on Zendikar, but we don't officially know. We'll and <laughs> so we'll, we'll have to see what happens with that. I'm, I'm excited to hear about Soren and Olivia next week. I was glad to get more answers today. My other question, and this was, I, I kind of asked you this earlier and we got off, slightly off track, as we always do. Um, but... <laughs> Which you would really know if you watched our RPG videos. <laughs> That's true. We, we kind of uh, mess around in those very often. Um, but yeah, so uh, we. my other question is, where is Tamiya? Did she planeswalk? Did she die? Why is her journal still here? You know, she clearly left it with this guy. I'm not going to remember his name either, but the one who was in the wall, the bearded human who was in the wall in Markov Manor with the journal that Jace took from him because he was already dead. He didn't need it anymore. Um, but Tamiya was with him in the journal. She talked about him in the journal um, and seemingly either was working with him and or was traveling with him and gave him the journal for safekeeping. And now Jace has it. But where did she go? Did she leave, you know... Basically, what Jace was saying that was at the end of this story was that the journal kind of didn't have further description any later on than what we heard in terms of the mysteries. Yeah. That doesn't mean there isn't more stuff in there about where she might be going next, and Jace may not have cared about that at that moment when he was trying to figure out the or mysteries. Or understood it yet. Right. So, we'll see, and especially because he's kind of going crazy so right. you know is he is he understanding everything is he flipping through the book and seeing something that's not really there like the 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 one that morphed into the the illusion that morphed into uh liliana well, or the you illusion know he's that, drawing conclusions that he really necessarily shouldn't be drawing yes or... and and there's a card called liliana's machinations i believe where you see liliana standing in front of jace there's purple lightning or violet lightning shooting out of her and she's like standing over him, towering over him. And um, I think the flavor text says something to the effect of like, you can't, you already came to me asking for help and didn't take my advice. So what are you doing here now? So presumably now that at the end of this story, he has drawn the conclusion that Liliana is the one who's doing this, which I think is wrong uh, because he's going crazy. You know, will he go back to her and kind of have her wake him up or what? Like, how is that going to work out? You know what I think it means is that his mind in this crazy state is finding a way to rationalize what he's experiencing. And it might even also be that Liliana is in some way protecting him from whatever the heck this is when it just, when the shit hits the fan and, you know he's gonna die, Liliana will be there to protect him from dying. Even basically. though even though she has been seemingly so standoffish right. throughout this I entire think it's process. Just her way of kind of being with him enough to, to keep him alive. Um, okay. Yeah. And we'll see. Uh, there's definitely more to come with these stories. Uh, so, you know, we're going to stay tuned. As you can tell, based on the length of our discussion, the length of this episode, this was a very meaty story. Yes. You know, it was a longer one. It was a meatier one. There was a lot of information they gave us. Right. There's a lot of information to digest. 
if a you, lot of conclusions you can draw or not draw because you don't really have the proof to draw any of those yeah. conclusions anyway. Yeah. But. And a lot of questions that you can come up with. I don't know that the question of where Tamiya went is going to be answered in this set. It'll probably be in the yeah, next one. I would say probably the next one too. And my, guess. my guess has always been that Liliana and Tamiya will be two of, if not both of, the Planeswalkers in Eldritch Moon, just because who else is it going to be? Um, like I said, you never know no. who might come out of the woodwork. It's true. It's true. Uh, I can also say, just quickly, and, and then we'll, we'll end, because there's just so much to talk about, but um, I will say that you, I think, were a lot more on board this time with the fact that you thought that it was leaning towards Emrakul. Yes. This is the first time that I actually agreed with other people's theories that the source of all of this power could be Emrakul. And I don't know. Uh, I'm still on the... I, I feel like I'm more hoping that it's not Emrakul than thinking that it's not. We'll have to see. You guys can totally stay tuned and hear what we have to say if and when these things get revealed to us because we're going to keep doing these videos. If they're going to keep putting out the stories, we're going to keep reading them regardless so we can keep talking to you guys about them. Uh, we thank you Whether as... Whether you want to hear it or not. <laughs> we thank you as always for watching. Definitely subscribe down below to find out when these videos come out, when the RPG videos, the openings come out. Uh, as I said, we already have the Fat Pack openings, the Pre-Release Kit openings, the Booster Box openings. Definitely check those out as well. We had an awesome time opening them. We've been getting a lot of success with people being able to see them. Give us thank your... Thank you so much. Absolutely. If you've already seen them already, thank you. If you haven't, people have been enjoying them, so definitely go check them out. It was a great time for us. It's been a great time for others. Um, as we always say, first of all, as we say in these videos, thanks to Amy, hashtag Vorthos Pride. Yeah. Uh, and thank you guys so much for watching, as you have been doing, as you always do. Check out the other stuff on our channel. There's a like button down below if you did like what we just talked about. Give us your opinions, your feelings, your thoughts, your concerns in the comments down yes. below. Any analysis you have, I'm yes. thirsty to hear it. Yes. Please leave it in the comments. Yes, because we, we discuss it with ourselves, but that can only go so far. Give us your opinions, your questions, your answers, your theories down yeah. below. You can also... Other brains in the game. Can, we can come up with a lot more theories from yes. that. So. And sh show us your hashtag Vorthos Prime. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook. You can check us out on Twitter. Those links are in the description down below. Uh, and guys, as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.